Well, I tell you, I've been waiting on this moment for a very long time. As long as I've been in the industry, I've always wanted to have the opportunity to talk to these queens of gospel. And now God has graced me the opportunity to sit down and talk to some members of the incomparable Clark sisters joining me, Dorinda Clark Cole and Jackie Clark Chisholm. How are y'all this day? Wow, they're wonderful. We are great, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Jackie. Absolutely. Good to be it, it is, it, It's amazing for me to, to have the opportunity to, to sit down, as I said, to talk to you in, in this context because we are inspiring so many people and the whole idea behind what we do is inspire you. And this whole weekend is about that. And when we talk about inspiring, you have been inspiring so many people for so long. I mean, what, 40 years now in, in, in the business, doing what you do. Talk about how that has what that has meant to you, because you've really changed. You change gospel music in so many different ways. Well, I think that. Um... I don't know if it has, it, you, are you asking has it changed us? No, how how it makes you feel to know that you have changed so much. Cause I, th oh. I think about it this way. I think about so many people that not only have you influenced but you also have people, I remember the, uh, when Snoop Dogg reached out to you guys, uh, people are sampling your music left and right. So you have, cha you have really changed the music in industry in a way a lot of folks have. I think the most of the most, I guess the most grateful part that for us is that God has allowed us to um, maintain um, being integral and being, um, you know, and giving us longevity, not so much because we're good or because we deserve it, but because we are women of God and we love God and we live that kind of a life. And I think with that being said, I think that people understand and they see that what we sing about on the stage that we really do live it when we step off the stage. And I think that's more important than anything to me. I, Dorinda can say what she feels, but I think what my mother instilled in us um, and how she brought us up about being women of God and not making it. And see, the thing that I find that's most intriguing is my mother would always tell us, don't let anybody stumble over your life. And we have tried to live up to that standard of being women of God. So what you see on the stage, you see off the stage as well. So Dorinda can add her part. <laughs> well, I, I think, um, and, and I'm just grateful to be a part of these lovely ladies. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All these years, born and raised um, with uh, these ladies and to see the, it really stems from, the um, the awesomeness of my mom, the late great Dr. Maddie Moss Clark, who trained these girls up um, in a house on Calvert, um, singing, and then moving to Sorrento, where our whole life began. Yeah, and um, from there, um, it's just so many great memories there because you can't really talk about where we've gone until you can you know see where we've come from, and I think the movie has talked about that. But to be in, as they say, the game, um, uh, the game of ministry, well, it's not, ministry is not a game, but to be in the industry um, all these years, I think is such an honor um, that people would continue to hold us with um, high regards, um, us as ladies, because now um, there are a lot of young ladies that are coming up and it's more than just one field um, of, of, of what, what they call a career or, or, or what have you, but it's more than that. It's now you have women that are in C that are CEOs. You have women that are going in high places. I mean, it, it really speaks of it because when you think of um, our vice president, uh, Kamala Harris, um, who has taken that seat. So we're moving in some high places and um, and it's just a blessing to be able to be a part of that. But I think um, it would not happen without you, Tony, uh, all the great men and women that sit behind the desk, have the golden voice and continues to spin the Clark sisters. Yes. You know, that would never happen. And it started, um, we must say, it really started really kicking up when 
um, uh, Frankie Crocker was the one that found he brought the sunshine. So I, I really have to get hats off to all of the radio personalities that have really um, did a lot of the Clark sisters, uh, spend a lot of the Clark sisters mu music. You know, and, and you mentioned uh, Brought the Sunshine. I I remember I was just starting my first year in, in the industry. And when that song hit, we played that song so much. <laughs> Thank you. And, Thank you. and, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you, we played it so much because it did exactly what it was supposed to do. I mm -hmm. mean, we did we never thought it was a nobody thought it was a gospel tune. Right. It was about just being happy and inspired. How did it make you feel to know that it crossed over, but not only did it cross over, it impacted everybody? Mm -hmm. I, I think the most important thing about that song was the fact, Tony, that the song was out two years and was never played on a gospel station. And so for it never to have been played on a gospel station, but for God to let it go to an R&B station and for it to become as big as it is, um, I, I think that that was the most impactful thing was that the way God strategically allowed it to fall into place and to fall into the hands of the man who actually played it by Miss, I mean, the, the, the thing with that really gets me with Mr. Frankie Cracker and we give him all the honor. Um, for what he did for us. But I think the thing that was most intriguing was when he said, when he was telling us how it happened, he was telling me and my mom, he said that he was running late. And you know, back in the day when you had to put the big LPs on the uh spin right. on the window, he said when he he said he said he looked at the album cover and said, Well, you bought the sunshine, it's a title, so that must be their hit. Never knowing that the song was never played on the gospel station. Wow. <laughs> The song on there that was the hit that year was Endow Me, if I'm not mistaken. It was Endow Me. So that's what the gospel station was really blowing up. It was Endow Me. Mm -hmm. And so just for God to allow it to transition out of the gospel hand into the R&B hand and for it to become as great as this song has been, mm -hmm. uh, it's just we're just grateful for what God has done. Truly grateful. It, it, that's that's an amazing story. I I never knew that. I, I I grew up loving Frankie Crocker. So you know, knowing that he was the person that and and the way that came about, truly God. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Now, from an, let, let's get into the evangelistic side of of who you are, because your your music does exactly that. It speaks to the spirit. It mm. speaks to the soul and gets people to understand who God is. What has that journey been like? I mean, I, I, I know having the mother that you had, you have really no choice. Right. But, but in the context of really what your music has done, it really has changed. When I say it's changed people's lives, mm. when, when, I, when I think about Mariah Carey, when I think about uh, Queen Latifah, when I think about some of the other folks that you have influenced and they always mention your name, that's that that speaks volumes to the fact that you are the change makers in this business across the board. It doesn't matter that it started in gospel. So mm -hmm. how does it make you feel to know that impact and these names of folks are because there's there are stars, stars and singers, singers. Mm -hmm. And y'all are singers, singers. If that makes sense. <laughs> That was really good to put that like that, Tony. Um, you know, and I think, it, and I guess every time we think about how we ended up where we are, and you got to say that uh, I guess we've been out here a long time to know that um, people, like you said, Mariah, um, Mary J, Queen Latifah, and um, Missy Elliott, Mary J. Blige. I mean, these ladies, they have been, they say it, that they have been listening to our music um, growing up. And so that really speaks volumes for us, even in this late stage that we're in, because you never know who's listening, who's watching. And that just goes to show you just, just what you were saying about evangelizing. Um, and my mother always told us, you know, you sing to inspire, to lift people because you don't know where they are. Right. And that's what um, our music, um, as people say, have done. It, it, it catches them in a place 
where they're, they're, they're just no control. And, and then all of a sudden, when they hear the music, they all, you know, they automatically just start to listen and it like a soothing um, meditation for them. It puts them in a place where they can really say, oh, I can make it through this. And that's what evangelism is really all about, is to inspire, to uplift, to, to really bring people in to let them know that it's more than just what meets the eye. We're just the conduits exactly uses to 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 connect. So we're just blessed to be able to uh, be able to share this. And then I gotta say about my sister Twinkie, Twinkie's music is transcends all generations um, because we've always said that to her, her music is timeless. Right. Anytime you can take a pray for the USA and um, and play it today. And it's going with what we're dealing with right now. And 30 uh, years old, don't forget that. Yeah, it's it's just all of her songs have just met up, met people where they are, and then met our nation um, where it is. Even right now, there's songs right. right now that we could sing that would lift, you know, people. So that's what it really we was hoping that people understand. That's what it was all about. You know. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, 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 go, Tony. Well, no, I was just, I was thinking, I was, I, I remember an interview, and I forget who it was with, but one of the statements that came out of the interview, it was, uh, we have not compromised to be recognized. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and let me ask you this, because the industry, even though it's the gospel industry, the music industry, it's a music business. Mm -hmm. and, and you have transcended, but you have not compromise mm. to be recognized. You're recognized because of what God has given you and what you've given back through his gift. Mm. So talk about that a little bit because your realness, your truth and who you are, what do you say to those young artists out there? Because there are some young artists, as much as I hate to say it, even on the gospel side, they're compromising to be recognized wow. and, and they're not speaking the way that it should. And you don't get that anointing when you hear it, but almost I would say every song that I've, I've heard that you've ever performed, that I've ever played, that we've ever played, you you get that little chill, that 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 thing that happens to your spirit when you play it, you turn it up, you get the chill. That's what happens when I hear your song. So what do you say to those artists out there that are compromising? I think the most important thing that I would say to the uh, artists today is um, stay true to the, to your ministry. So if it's your ministry, see, because some people do it because they just want to perform. Even though they're doing it in the gospel industry, they're doing it because they're getting the opportunity to perform and they're getting the chance to see themselves on a stage or on a platform that they probably never thought that they would get to. And so that's what happens when you get a one hit wonder person. You know, yeah. somebody who has had one hit and that that and they ain't had no more after that. That that was it, the beginning and the ending. So right. I think when we look at the young artists today, I think the most important thing is a lot of them, they 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 do what they do, but they compromise to to uh, gain a greater stage or a higher place or to get with somebody that is doing something that they really want to be connected with. I think with us, it was different because my, what my mom taught us is that you don't compromise when it comes to God, that mm -hmm. either you do what's right and you're going to live right. You know, and she used to tell us, you're going to live saved in this house. So you're going to say you save and filled with the Holy Ghost, whether you save is not filled with the Holy Ghost at all. So it's going to be your bad if you ain't doing that. So I think that to me, like when I look at the young artists today, I think that they, a lot of them compromise because they're trying to get to a different status in the industry. And the most important thing about m maintaining your status is what it took you to get there, you got to keep it. And see, when God puts you on a higher level, you ain't got to work at it. God blesses you and he anoints you as long as you live for him and committed to him. God will bless you and anoint every stand that you take in life. He will, he will, it'll, it'll happen and you don't even know why it's happening, but he making it happen. It ain't you. So there it is. Yes, ma'am. And you know what? I, I'm going to say this to you because this is really crazy to me. This is really crazy. So I'm going to share something with you. So. I'm going to reach to my device and you were talking about the Holy Ghost. Now I've got, <laughs> I've got the Bible verse that pops up my daily uh, meditation. Okay. It came up 
and full of the Holy Ghost <laughs> and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. There you wow. go. See, I was like, see how spiritual you I said am. it. It popped up. I was like, that, that's amazing. That is truly amazing. <laughs> So, let, so, so let's talk about the, the movie. The movie on Lifetime, of course, uh, Lifetime wants to play it as many times as they possibly can because every time they play it, um, another million or two, it's it's, it's up to 13 million time, uh, viewers um, mm -hmm. that have watched that movie so far. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Right? And, and, and I got to say this because one thing a lot of folks may know or may not know that you know, we work for Radio One, which is the parent company, of course, of TV One. Mm -hmm. And the unsung Clark sisters, that's kind of how all that that Lifetime stuff happens. So tell our viewers a little bit about that. Yeah, well, you know, that actually, um, how, like you said, that's how it really started. There was um, no movie in the making. Um, uh, I don't know, because Holly, it was Dr. Holly Carter, of course, mm -hmm. Who's the executive producer? Who, um, you know, she's she's a part of us. And uh, when I say us, I'm talking about the, the Church of God in Christ. And she's always had some love for us. And so she says, "I'm gonna do something with these girls one day." And she always would do little spot dates with us. But um, this particular time, she says, "No, this is gonna be like a major project for me." Mm -hmm. And it was the TV one um, on song. And so that's when she got to know about the Clark sisters and how we all started and, you know, growing up in that home. And it, so she had a little template of how and what the Clark sisters were all right. about, but not knowing that it was a whole bigger picture. Oh, wow. What TV One had. Yeah. So TV One. We thank God for TV One, yes, yeah. we thank God for Miss Hughes. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, putting that out there to let people know this, because that was the beginning of people right. really knowing who the Clark sisters were. And, and I say that um, as far as the uh, industry, the secular side, mm -hmm. of knowing who we were. So, so Miss Hughes had a lot to do with that. Um, that that part because people didn't know because everybody watches TV one. Um, yeah. Everybody's looking into um, on song because they want to know what happened to where the artists and what they've done. Right. So this was the template for the movie. And uh, I don't think Dr. Carter thought that it would have gone this far where she right. knew she had it all in mind that this was the next thing was the film um, or the movie. And when she put that thing, um, brought it to the network, um, bam, and this is where we are. And we never thought that we, and we were, I think the fourth highest rating, uh, movie, rated movie yeah. on Lifetime. So yeah. that really speaks volumes of the Clark sisters. And um, just thank God that, you know, it, it looks like to me, Twinkie song is right again. The sky is the limit. Right. <laughs> you know, to what I can have. You right. know, you need to receive it. God will perform it today. That's looking for a miracle if you didn't know it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I love the story. And even, I mean, it just goes to show how even as long as you've been in the industry, you stay true, as you mentioned before. Right. And, and, and God is continuing to bless and you are continuing to influence and change, as much as I hate to say it this way, change the game when it comes to it. Because I mentioned earlier about the folks that you influence, mm -hmm. but talk a little bit about when Snoop Dogg gave you a call. Because that that's a, you know, when he did the gospel album, I mean, he called a lot of folks, but I thought to myself, and then when he, Clark Sisters? <laughs> With Snoop Dogg? I'm like, really? <laughs> But so I think was, about that. With Snoop, I think with Snoop, with Snoop and Jay Drew, I guess we're talking, and that's how it kind of came about. Uh, mm -hmm. But but if you talk to Snoop, Snoop shared with us when we did it. We did the um, we did the um, what you call that thing at the beginning of the year, the football thing. What do you call it? That was the the um, it's a football thing that comes in January. What is that? It's the. Snoop Super Bowl, Super Bowl. We did, yes, we did yes. The Super Bowl. We did the Super Bowl concert. Us and Rand Salen, Wolf, 
um, Snoop Dogg, and Snoop Dogg shared with us then that he he that he grew up listening to us because his grandmama made him listen to us. And so, because his grandmother made him listen to us, he said he just fell in love with everything we did, and he would listen to all our music, and he would uh, occasionally he would play, he would be on Instagram. <laughs> He would be on Instagram doing his thing, but he would be playing the crocs and stuff and just kind of bobbing to it. So that was kind of like how he came about. And then you got you got Rodney Jerkins, who has loved us and has been a friend of our family for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got Jermaine Dupree, who uh, we um, fortunately we set we met with him um, at Tyler Perry's opening. That's how mm -hmm. we met Jermaine. That's how. Let me show you how Jermaine did. So Jermaine came over to our table where we were eating after Tyler Perry's thing, that Sunday thing we did, we sang, and he came to our table and he said, I just want to say this to y'all. There ain't nobody under this tent. It had to be about a thousand people under the tent. He said, there's nobody in this building that can sing better than y'all. I said, really? So this is me. So Dorinda was there and then Twinkie came up because he wanted to take a picture. So he said, he said, well, I love y'all. I, 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 I said, well, you ain't asked to do nothing with us. I said that. <laughs> he said, well, you ain't said nothing. He said, what's your number? I gave him my number. Now, this, now, mind you, this was on Sunday. I gave him my number. He gave me his personal number. On Monday at 11 o'clock in the morning, Jermaine Dupree called my number. And he said, okay. He said, so we're going to make it happen. I said, okay. I said, uh, send us some tracks. And I think Wednesday, he sent me tracks. <laughs> yeah, the they have real we we did so i think that just just being able to be approachable you know and Dorinda can share her side but to me being able to be approachable because a lot of artists don't make themselves I mean, even a new artist they don't want to talk to certain people or they don't want to you know when you don't want to mingle and you don't want to you know uh uh make contact with people or mm -hmm. you, you know you feel like you 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 know, you're greater than they are and you just don't, I mean, and I, one thing I was telling somebody the other day about our generation is with our generation, we get along. We don't talk about each other. We mm. don't that. See, that's, that's key. That's real important. We all, we love on each other. We may not, I can't, I, Tony, I could not stand you, but I would never tell that publicly. Absolutely. Okay. And, and I think that's one of the things that new artists today, when they get mad at somebody, they want to get online and just say things and say things that they shouldn't say. Mm -hmm. You don't know whether that's going to be a bridge for you or if that's going to be a, a, a deep sea diving for you and you ain't coming back. How da, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Absolutely. That's it. So, so you, you talked about online. With What's going on? Because I mean, that social media is a big deal now. So how is how is that been for you guys? Because I know, you know, I don't know if you got a team or anything. How has that been for you? Because I mean, you can look out there and see some some of the things that you guys are doing, and see some of the work behind the scenes. Kind of, what's that been like for you? Well, that's that's been exciting. It's been exciting, and I I really think um, social media is good, um, especially now for the pandemic because. We, we can't do no concerts. <laughs> you know, we can't. You know, we, we're with the six feet, the social distancing. Right. So I think this is a great tool for us. But I think that um, uh, the young people, I, wouldn't, I don't want to just say young people because you got some old people doing That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Just using it as, um, as a negative, um, if I can say, a negative tool to to shout back at people, um, you know, and I don't think it should be done like that. Advertisement is perfect for social media, um, letting people know what you're doing, keeping up with it. We try to stay on here. All of us are on social media um, because that's what's keeping us alive. The only thing is that I just don't want them to uh, take away the, the radio. <laughs> You know, the real stuff that that really how how we started, how the connection, because, um, you know, the way we see streaming is, is the top priority now. This right. is the way we're going. And so we, we got to make sure we stay abreast. And that's why it's important to have um, people around you 
that can tell you these things and to show you how to connect with your, your supporters because if you don't, you're going to be lost in the shuffle. That's true. You're going to be lost. And this, this is the perfect tool. I mean, look at all the ministries. Right. The ministry, churches are shut down. They are shut, closed. Right, exactly. Of the church are now open. They are closed. Right. So now all they have, this is the vehicle that they have. It is actually streaming. It's online presence and just making sure that they up it a little bit more. You got churches that never been online that are online now. So this has brought us to a whole nother, you know, era um, where we have to do it. So Absolutely. It's a part of our life now. Yeah. And, and, and I think and see, we don't even know just yet how we're going to come out of this pandemic. Yeah. No, if this is going to be the way of life for us, we don't know that. And so it would behoove you that, you know, when you when you make enemies on media, you, when you make enemies on the media, you know that they come back to bite you quick. It don't ain't no right. way game no more. Because see, remember, back in our day. When something came out about somebody, it might be a year before you didn't heard it. But when you by right. time you hear it, it's gonna be it's, it's totally different from what really happened. Yeah. Today, when you do something today on social media, this afternoon you be you piece of piece of dead meat. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you yeah, you're speaking the truth because that's that's the unfortunate part about it, and we've seen that happen. Um, you know, when I when I sit in, I, I think about you mentioned the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and being who you are, and I know God speaks about being still. And it, it seems as though in the midst of all the things that we have faced as, as people and really as, a wor as the world and the country, we're supposed to be being still right now and getting something out of this. Speak to that a little bit, because a lot of folks aren't getting that message. They don't, they're not understanding sometimes the, the best thing you can do is be still and listen mm -hmm. and not, and, and I know y'all know this, but I just, what can is, you talk a little bit about that? There's a scripture that says, be still and know that I am God. Okay. Right. And I think a lot of times what people miss in, in that, in the interim of that is that he said that he, he said that he said, right, well, he said, what is, what is, what's the scripture, Durant? I'm trying to think of the scripture. Mm -hmm. oh, say it in the low review queue. Right, right. Um, right the vision and make it, right, the vision and make it plain, right? But he also says that he will make, if, if for every step that we make, God will make another step for us when you're doing it the right way. When, we, when, when you look at social media and you look at all the things that we have been um, introduced to, um, and when you look at how you navigate through that, when you, how you're navigating through it, living in the pandemic, we don't know how we're going to come out of this next year or if it's going to even be next year. Now, it's our prayer that we do come out of it next year. But the thing that I've been telling people doing my workshops and stuff online, the thing I tell people is this. If there's something that you wanted God to, to give you room to do or give you a space to be able to do something that you've always wanted to do. And you know how we sit back and we look at people and say, you know what? I was going to do that. That was my idea. That was my, but you had, you didn't had a whole seven months to get ready to, you should have done been doing it. All right. Right. If you've been doing it. Then ain't, you ain't got nobody to blame but you. So I look at this place and this time um, to do the things that I've always wanted to do that I've never been able to do. I ain't want to cook for nobody. I cook for my husband and my kids. I ain't want to be no cook. Look at what God done done with me. I got a cooking <laughs> show. I, who said I wanted a cooking show? I didn't say that. God said, yeah, your gift will do what? Really for you. Yeah. So I look, I look at I look at living in the pandemic as a gift from God to give us a place of quiet. When you're in a place of quiet and you're in a place of rest, that's when you can tell you talk to God and God mm -hmm. will give you the next movement that he has for you. He'll show you, he'll navigate you through it, even though you may not even want it. He will navigate you to it. Mm -hmm. Once he brings Man. you to it, he's gonna navigate you to it. I, you better pray. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why that's why I asked that question. Because I mean, because because when you sit there, I, I see so many people so many times that I want to I want to I want to tell them all the time. What are you doing? Don't you understand? You're supposed to be sitting still and 
hearing in the silence, his voice is greater than any noise you've ever heard. So the thing about it is not understanding what this is all about is, I, I just don't get it. So thank you for sharing that. It is so, so very important. Yeah, so I know we have, we talked about it, but we haven't talked, your music. I mean, the, the, the return of the Clark sisters, of course, the album that came out a little earlier this year. So in, in that, I mean, I'm always excited because I don't know how you guys have done this. I know it's a blessing from God. Your voices haven't changed. Mm -hmm. Your energy hasn't changed. You see it. I mean, when I look at the videos, I'm like, what? Thank how you, long God. they been doing this? This is amazing. <laughs> so so talk about, let's talk about your music a little bit. How does it feel after, after so many years? Does it feel like it did when you started or does it feel better than it ever did? Well, it, it gets greater it, uh, somehow because I think we because we hooked up with God. <laughs> it does. It gets greater, um, and we we had never thought that we would be out here this long. I mean, and thank God that we're all still around. Um, we're still here to be able to carry on what God has started in us, um, mm -hmm. and and. I, I'm, I'm saying, you know, when I look back and I see, I say, well, you know, this is, you know, God hasn't allowed things to change. And I re really believe that things have not changed. And when I say change, but the worst um, is because of our um, connection with God. Mm -hmm. It's because of our relationship with God. Because if you got a real good relationship, Tony, with God, there's no way you're going to go off. You know, if you've got a shepherd, if you, you're staying exactly. true to the shepherd and you're not hopping all over the place and, you know, you're paying your tithes and doing what you normally would do if you were in the church right. um, and you're hearing the voice from God, um, then you will continue to stay true to what God has committed you to do. Lord, I'm a poet and didn't know it. Stay true to what God has committed Man. you to do. I'm a poet. And didn't know it. You're Stay true to what God has committed you. Stupid. And Absolutely. when God has committed you to do something, that means you have made a vow. And I can't turn back on my vow in the pandemic. Right, right. It's too mm -hmm. crucial. Ten months. I'm. It's it's going on ten months that we are in this, and I can't afford to switch up right now. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're telling me to stay in the house, I'm going to stay in the house because I know that there's something greater for me with me sitting quiet. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why, mm -hmm. that's why, I, and I really believe that the reason why we have not veered away is because of our connection um, with our church, um, with our, our bishop. We constantly, he keeps us on that road too, making sure that we are, you know. Right. That, we can't go nowhere. We can't travel. You know, all of that is a part of the pandemic. So we just stay true. And then God provides for us even while we sit and still. Now that is a blessing. I, listen, that is true. I, that's my own stuff right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. And uh, I think I think um, even even just to add a little bit of what Dorinda was saying, I think it is real important that we understand that he gives us quiet time for a reason. So what you do in your quiet time, and this is one thing that I always like, I wrote a message about God is speaking, but are you listening? Mm -hmm. We've got quiet time now. God is speaking. But see, we so busy watching TV and eating that we're going to gain all this weight. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't get away. We can't even get in the closets or dresses. But let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I'm just kidding. But some of them we can't for real. <laughs> but this is a quiet time that God is. It's, it's a it's a space and a time that mm -hmm. God has given us that ordinarily we would not have had. So mm -hmm. what are you doing that's productive for you in this place and in this time? That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, because you mentioned uh, uh, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, and I'm thinking about women now in the context. I mean, you, your sisters um, in the game, you had done so many things and changed so many lives and influenced so many people. But women, especially women of color right now, are in a position 
to do what they, and, and I say this all the time, we forget that it's always been women in our community mm -hmm. that have uplifted, supported, and guided us through whatever we could. I come from a single parent household. My mom yeah. was a single parent. So in that context, um, I always look at women in our community as the leaders, regardless of what anybody says, that's how I always look at it. So what would you say to, to those women out there who feel challenged, even in this time that we're in right now, that they don't have the ability to, to move forward, to do the things they need to do, to, mm -hmm. to be the leadership or be, the, be what they need to do, even for their families, They're, because of the stress and, and all the things that are going on. I mean, there's a lot of trauma going on right now. And folks aren't dealing with it very well. So what would you say to those those young women and those women out there to deal with this situation? You know, the, the, um, the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. And I think people are really walking um, in fear because they don't know what's next. And then that, that goes to how close is your relationship with God, I can say. Um, even if, if even if you don't have a relationship with God, you cannot you, you you really cannot make great strides without having, as they say, a higher power. It's really <laughs> what I said. It's God. But um, to to see uh, where we are going, um, yeah. God has allowed this day to happen to show that women have great influence in a community, um, not just in the community, but just in our world period. Um, when you look at it, uh, uh, look at all of the women that we're uh, standing, you know, we're standing on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. you know, we've seen so many people that have um, achieved. And even when you look at people that are living today, I mean, you, you know, you look at the Oprah Winfrey's and you look at all of these other one, talented women um, and I'm just speaking of our, our race because our culture, because that we are part of. But, you know, you look at that and you see how they matriculated and you can tell that the road has not been easy. If you follow their path, you'll see that their road has not been easy. Anything you do, and I'm, and I'm speaking for those of, that are on that path of success, that path that you've been struggling and um, even in this pandemic, you, you, this is the time to really kind of pull yourself together and say, I've got to do this. I've got to do this. There's dreams, there's goals, there's aspirations, um, inspiration inside of you. There's things inside of you right now that you don't even know you have until you get to that quiet place. We keep talking about that quiet, quiet place. Exactly. You cannot, and I say it all the time, Tony. I said, in order for you to get insight, in order for you to get inspiration, um, even from God, you can't even have two people talking at the same time. It's only one person can talk, and only God can give those ideas while you're in that quiet place. And uh, when I when I see all of the. the prominent women um, that are in place right now, that just shows you that there is so much that we can go for, so much that we can achieve there. Don't limit yourself. Those that have been, you know, you, you see yourself and I see myself doing this. I see myself. Okay, if you see yourself, keep dreaming, keep dreaming. That day is going to happen. You know, I think about myself and I, all the things that I've wanted to do and and God has allowed me to. I, I never would have gotten the, uh, the clothing line um, thing that I'm doing right now if I had not have said, no, I'm going after it, you know, and to do it after 15 to almost 20 years, you know, it's, it's got to be in you to keep going after it. And I just want to commend all the women that are, are in that field, whatever field you in, don't stop. Um, Jackie has a good thing about journaling. She she journals and, you know, it's something that I'm trying to do, it's, you know, it's just a little, taking me a little time. But uh, but that journaling thing, it, it's so important for us as women so that we can, we see where we want to go, but sometimes it takes a little longer to get there. Um, but we can, we can do it. We can do it. I think, and I think, Tony, you know, I, what I think back, um, not to tell you my age or nothing like that, because I'm not going to tell. Oh, I'm going to tell you. Don't tell your age. 
<laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not that far behind you. So I don't know you oh, yeah. You were far behind me, sugar. Oh, yeah. No, no, not. You'd be well, surprised. I think, I think when you think about it, and I don't know if you've even seen the movie, but if you think about the movie years back and when I was having my children in um in in the six in the seventies when I had my babies, how we had a movie called there was a movie out called Roots. I don't know if you remember that. Oh yeah. But in that movie, you saw how the women were the one they were the strong people who held their families together even when they were pulled apart even when they was raped by sharecroppers even when they had to t take the children raise the uh children that they were they were being slaved under until they had to pull their own families together how they came together how they kept things together how your mother tony had to do everything she did she might have worked two or three jobs in order to make food on um, put food on your table but you had everything you needed because God created to us to be strong women because of the things that we have had to go through and the things that we've had to endure. All the injustices that we still to this day are still living through it. And the only way we're going to rise up above that and the only way we're going to come out of that is we got to stick together. That's the one thing about us that we got to learn how to do. Because when you think the average white woman, and I'm just saying this, the average white woman doesn't have to struggle the way the average black woman has to struggle. When we graduated, when I graduated from college, when I graduated with my nursing degree, if, if I, when we went to do interviews and my friend was working in, 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 um, human resources, she would tell me, well, you're going to make $20 an hour, but the white people, white lady was making $27 an hour. So see, mm -hmm. I know the injustice and the inequality that we have had to endure. But one thing about God, God will never leave. He said he'll never leave you nor mm -hmm. forsake you. And he said that he, your gift going to make room for you and every dime, <laughs> every dime that you get, he's going to make sure you get two or three more. So just, just, just hang in there. That's all you got to do. Just hang in. Well, you know what? I, I knew this was going to be exactly what it was. Too short. And, and because I could sit and talk to y'all for so long. And I, I want to say this to you, too, because and I want I want our viewers to know this. Of course, this is an Inspire You weekend. And and these women have been inspiring so many people for so long. And, and like I said earlier, changing lives. But I want them to know y'all had a very busy day and you sat down and took your time. And, and shared with our audience who you are. You are absolutely delightful. And I just want to say thank oh, you, praise thank you, and bless you. Oh, thank you, Tony. Thank we appreciate you, Tony. that. We thank want you. to make sure. We said we weren't going to let this day go by without being with Tony today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were tired. We had to do about 20 songs. <laughs> Well, I just I just thank y'all so much and so, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep praying for y'all because you. you know your your success is a testament that loving God, believing in God, and being faithful, what it shows. So thank you so much for being faithful. Thank you, Tony. Right. We want to say thank you to you for thinking about us enough to want to talk to us enough to play our music. I want to thank you for that. I appreciate what you've done and all the people who in your station that spin our music. Please let them know that we love them and we appreciate every time they put a Clark Sister record on. They got love from the Clark Sisters and, and look, and we put some blessings on them. How about that? <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you. Be blessed. All right, you too. Thank you.